welcome back to part two of uh, spherical triangles in this i have put in some other questions here given to us sh of a star bearing to 70 in latitude and you have seen another star bearing 000, zero, zero with an altitude of 30 degrees. We've got to find out the second declination of the star. The second star, what is here? Now, when any body is bearing 270 or 90, we already know that the declination and latitude should be the same name. Here we have star Vega bearing 270, angle Z is 90, PZ, we have the altitude, uh, is the latitude, uh, minus 90, declination given to us, we can always find out PX, and using your Napier's rules, So we found out the LHA of the known star Vega. Being west, angle P would be your LHA. Now LHA star is given by HA Aries, which is your GHA Aries plus minus your longitude. And we are talking about at the same instant, that means your longitude is same, so LHA Aries for the known star, what is Vega? Another star would be the same. So we try to find out LHA Aries here. Yeah? LHA Aries is this much. Now, when the another body is bearing. Zero, zero, zero. It's the latitude here is 46. Altitude is, of this body is only 32, 30 degrees. That means this body is circumpolar. You're seeing it at the lower meridian. Bearing zero, 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 LHA of the other star would be. 180 and P is your latitude and as I said altitude is just 30 so your body is circumpolar seen at the lower meridian LHA of that body would be 180 we get the declination. Now LHA star is 180. We already have the LHA Aries. I can find out my SHA. He wants us to find out the geographical position. The geographical position we know is GHA and the declination. We have the declination already, so basically we have the latitude. GP is latitude is the declination. And longitude is your GHA. So basically we got to find out a GHA here. Now, this is the east. 
it's not saying bearing east, so it is on the east somewhere. We know PZ. PX. ZX. Declination is given to me. Now I have the three sides of a triangle. We can always find out any angle what we have to find out. You can use have a sign as cos formula. I have used have a sign formula here. You can use cos formula also. And I do the angle. Angle P is 23, body being east, LH is more than 180, so LH would be 360 minus P, now LH is equal to GH plus minus C stretch longitude, we have the longitude, and find out the GH. It is this measured westward, so longitude would be west. Position is given, altitude of star is given, declination is given. Find the SHG of star here. You have the latitude, you can find out PZ, ZX, 90 minus altitude, PX, 90 minus declination. Again, using your formula here. Here, this angle is measured westerly, so that should be your LH also. Just substituting the values here, and I get my SH of the star. Is what day of the longest to be five hours more than the shortest night? The longest day or the shortest day is depending upon what your declination is and where you are. Where you are, we have the longest day in the north. When the declination is not the shortest day, on the same day you have the shortest day on the southern latitudes. So for longest day, latitude and declination should be the same name and if you're talking about one side long one side short that's going to be opposite so day is basically when you're talking about is 24 hours is day and night body moves around from east to west it's 24 hours now, we learnt already that uh, <laughs> Declination remaining constant that the body remains from rising to being on your meridian that's culminating, the time taking is equal to what it takes from culminating to setting. So time to from rising to meridian is equal to meridian to setting. Now here, let's consider the shortest night to be A and the longest day would be a plus 5 because it's supposed to be 5 hours more. Now the sum total of day and night is 24. So A is 9 and a half hours. The total day is 24. That means your longest day would be 14 and a half hours here. 
that is divided by that would be the time would be the would be half the time what it takes from rising to this so 14 and a half divided by 2 that would be the length from rising to being on your meridian or calculating we have angle P here we have that angle P is 108 degrees 40 rising then your running distance is 90 apply uh, Napier's rules and try to Z here, P Z here. That's the latitude. And I said north and south, depending upon what declination you are using. Require the lady at the end of civil toilet in the evening in latitude. Sounds like clinician found. When we are talking about the civil toilet, civil toilet ends when the body is below 60 degrees. So in this case, your ZX is going to become 96. Z, we have the latitude, we have the declination given, 20, so PZ would be, PX would be, 90 minus declination, plus 70, 70, use you have a sign formula, three sides, you got to find out an angle, between the three sides, so you can find out angle P here. I've converted that into time, and as earlier stated. But if we are talking about sun, it is rate of increase is 15 degrees. If we are talking about some other body, like stars, it will be 15 degrees, 0 to 0.5. For moon, it will be taken as 14 degrees, 19 minutes with V. So this is the time what will be required for the body to go from your meridian to 60 degrees. It is on the sun is on the meridian at 12 o'clock lately, which is local apparent time. Plus, angle P, that would be the LAP. When the civil to that will, there is a duration of various bodies would depend dividing that would depend here with whatever the rate of change of G H is concerning a particular body there duration of polite now he wants me to find out the duration of twilight so I should have this angle here, this angle what I've already calculated, the difference of them would give me the duration of twilight. Uh, this is a similar question but the only thing is I have put it here just that you remember that it has to be divided not by 15. Rising, 
Bering is 68. Triangle Z is 68. ZX is 90. It's rising. ZX triangle. We have ZX is 90. Z we have the latitude 30, so Px will be 90. Using your Nipias rules, we can always find out angle P. P is and one degree is here. Now, time to set would be double because we have just calculated only this. So, time to set would be two times this. And here, you can see that I have divided by 15 degrees, zero to one, five minutes, which works out to be 13 hours. We had the time as 19, 19 plus 13. So LMT setting would be 32 hours, which would be the next day at 8 o'clock. And it says in latitude, this is one star is there, bearing this, find the declination of the star. And the city of the first star is given to me as 75. At the same time, he's talking about another star which is bearing 000. Now we got to find out the declination of the city of that star. Then he's giving me third star, which is bearing 180. Altitude this. So we just break up this question into three different parts here it is it's rising at 25 north latitude not possible to have the declination north because then it will not be bearing 125 so declination is south the amplitude of the star is east south the bearing is given to me i can always find out Angle is at x, which is going to be 90 minus 12535. Use this formula for amplitude and get the declination of the star. Declination of the first star. Let's see of the first body. I have ZX is 90, we had PZX, uh, PZ, we have the latitude, and angle Z, 125, which was the bearing, I can solve this triangle, finding out angle E, which in turn will give me LA. Body east, LH is more than 180, so LH is 360 minus angle P. So I have the LH of this body here. Now LH is LH is plus this. So I can always find out what is LH is uh, uh, here. Because SHA was already given to me for the star. So I got my LHA Aries. Because we are talking about all the three bodies being sighted at the same time, LHA Aries would be the same for all of them. Now let's talk about the second body at the same time, another body star is bearing 000. Altitude 10 degrees. 
declination. You'll find out the declination in the SHE of the star. The body bearing zero zero zero. So body should be somewhere here. But altitude is only ten. And P is the latitude, which is thirty-five. And P is thirty-five. So altitude is somewhere here. So this body is circumpolar. That means I'm seeing it on the other side of my meridian, inferior meridian. LH at that time is one eight zero. Now knowing the altitude of the body, I can always find out the declination, which is here. So XP dash. It's 25, which is 90 minus declination, so you can get my declination of the, of the second star. Now, I'll let you that star is 180, which putting up in this equation here, LHA series is the same, so I can always get my SHA of that star. So, set you of the star is here. Now he's talking about the third body bearing 180. Now the body is somewhere here. Now it is on my meridian. LHA of this body would be 360 or 000. And to find out the declination, I have the body here. This is 10. Z Q is 35. The, so what is remaining? Total is 90. And this is your declination 45. And this is the declination of your third body. I let you that body, as I said, was 360 because it's on my meridian. And substituting with LHA ADs, I can always find out my SHA for the third body. <coughs> His sun is rising with 65 degrees to north latitude, month of May. Declination is given, then steam some course in distance. Sun's declination changed by five minutes. Now in the month of May, still the sun is, declination is increasing, north. So that gives you an hint that the declination should be more north by five minutes. If this question was put up for some other month, uh, let's say July or something, then the change would be the declination would be reducing because your declination increases from March to June and then it reduces. Then it comes to equinox and then again it is increasing till it comes to solace. So depending upon what month has been put up, uh, that uh, will decide what actually the change is in this case. Declination is increasing. Taking into what month is given, you'll have to decide it should be added or subtracted. It's giving me the body rising. I have the amplitude. I can always find out the declination. And latitude. From there, I have done the course distance 160. So, get my DLAT from there on that course and distance, which works out to 1 degree 47 minutes. So, that would be your latitude when you see the sun setting. Your departure latitude was 3520. Latitude arrived at sunset 37. 
So you have the latitude. You will have the declination. <coughs> As I said, increase by five minutes because of the month. So, you know, depending upon what month we are talking about it. So, it can be increasing or decreasing. So, you decide on the month if the question is changed. Uh, here, the declination is increasing. And it is increased by five minutes. So, now your declination is 2015. You have the declination. You have the latitude. You can always find out the amplitude. And amplitude, as you know, is always named west declination, east declination, depending on uh, rising setting amplitude. Uh, thank you. I'll conclude the stop in the next part.